I, I was born in Iran, and then I lived the first years of my childhood there. And then I moved to Malaysia. I studied economics there. Um, I, I was traveling very often across Southeast Asia, so I can say I was in Southeast Asia rather than just Malaysia. Um, afterwards, I moved to Netherlands. I graduated from Rasmus University in Rotterdam. Um, after the university, I just wanted to, I, I knew always I wanted to be an entrepreneur because I always wanted to create new experiences. That was what I uh, was most excited about. Since I was 12, I was um, selling uh, nootropics tea to like uh, my fellow students before the exam. So I always wanted to look for something that doesn't exist and then bring that experience in a beautiful uh, packaging and story. So one area that I thought was interesting was actually tissue paper because it's one of the lowest interest um, product categories in supermarkets. Yet I thought we, we interact with it every day. And it's come from really like um, unsustainable sources. So um, like me and like um, another um, classmate of mine, um, we started like looking for different alternatives. I asked for my father to join us because he's a chemical engineer. The story goes back to my childhood. My father is um, a genius scientist. And as many of those genius scientists and engineers, um, he wasn't much of a business person. So I could always see that um, once he came to the business world, uh, those amazing ideas that he could have and transform the world did not come to reality. So that was kind of one of my childhood inspirations for getting, starting a company and learn how to do business. So once I was about to graduate, I saw this and that was an opportunity, you know, I felt like this much of talent, this much of, you know, like um, power should come uh, into, to have a bigger impact in the world. So um, he was very happy to hear that because, yeah, like he always wanted to spend more time with me. I was separated from him since I was 15. So, yeah. So actually the first time um, he came to uh, Rotterdam that we go together to the, the Ka exhibition in Dusseldorf is the largest plastic exhibition, which was his uh, ma major like uh, and expertise. Uh, during that um like exhibition, I talked about business behind each of those companies and he was talking about the science between each of those companies. And then we got so excited over beer at night and then we said, okay, I need you to improve this and make it softer. And uh, like, and it was like, okay, if I make it softer, can you sell it? I said, yeah. So that's how things started. And one thing led to the other and then we found um, bamboo and I started working to tweak it to make it better softer so it would not be a sacrifice for the quality it would be same thing um, but sustainable it worked pretty well in the beginning um, we talked to all major supermarkets in the netherlands and france we were just a few inches away from like having our product on their shelves so i was like hoping okay this is really good and i, I had a partner back then so i that he, he was french and then he could like handle most of the customers so i thought okay that would be great he can run the operation in europe and I can go to, to North America to expand it there, especially if we had a uh, connection to one of the biggest producers in North America. But just a few weeks before hitting the shelves, a uh, pandemic happened. So the shipping costs like soared up and then we couldn't um, guarantee supplies. The cost went up two, three times more. And because we were not in operation before, we couldn't um, like get a good deal from the shipping companies. So um, that was already uh, the time I already applied for it, Launch Academy. So meanwhile, in the process of getting to Canada, um, we had to abandon that idea and then work on something else that we've been working on for the past five years, but in more of a stealth mode. Um, right after that um, um, exhibition, we saw like um, different industrial cleaning methods for cleaning parts of petrochemical uh, components. And then I thought to myself, like chemical engineering has really advanced, but kind of laundries is, is the same as it used to be. And I was living in a building without any laundry unit on suite. So 
I really despise doing laundry. And then um, so we started working together to find a better way to do laundry because this way we're doing is based on a 200 year old technology. Actually, used to, they used to use horses to turn it around. And um, so we work with everything that you can imagine, like super critical CO2 uh, to, to ultrasonic waves. And then at the end, we, we came up with our idea to make the laundry faster, easier, and more sustainable. Um, I actually went for a trip to see my grandma in Iran. And then uh, because production of prototype was cheaper in Iran and my father back then was in Iran, we built one unit there um, so to build a prototype um, and test it with people, um, like how they like it. So I, I can say like, they were kind of customers, so because we got feedback, and uh, the first customers were actually my aunt and uncle. So they they really liked the idea, especially they're very frank doctors. So I really appreciate their opinion. But it was very exciting to finally someone put their clothes in it, and then it comes out clean and dry and ironed. So yeah. When you want to do something that build something that never existed, um, a lot of times you get very excited about a certain idea. For example, at one point we thought ultrasonic waves are really interesting because uh, they, they increase the, the molecular movement and then they can make the cleaning really fast. Um, so for a few months, we were so excited. Oh, this is going to be an amazing product. And then you build everything into one product and it doesn't work. So. Um, Perhaps it's a problem of physical product rather than software is that your ideas do not necessarily translate into a product. So after each of those setbacks, uh, when we built a lot of excitement, uh, it was such a bummer to see that uh, stop working, to pick it up and see that vision. Okay, I really, my goal is not to bring this particular technology, it's to make laundry faster, easier, and more sustainable. So then we had to pick up another technology and build another dream around it and then think about it. So I think that was the hardest part. Um, it depends full time, actually just me. My father was also working on something else, but um, we had part-time employees like engineers and everything of about seven people. So different parts of it, electronics, and computer robotics. Yeah, because we, we wanted to manage our cost and then uh, find mainly like freelancers because I couldn't have people on payroll. So it was one specific project working with them over a certain time. And so right now we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, 60 members. And then uh, they're in Korea, Sri Lanka, and Canada. And um, like mainly what we're doing right now is um, the final part of building the maps for the for the machine so it would have production ready files and also you're working with really cool industrial design team from south korea that are doing the aesthetics of the machine so it's finally very good to see you know the, how the machine would look like as a consumer product because everything was very rough and ugly before so So financially, we are just um, basically on our capital and we have one investor so far. We have now like um, interest from investors to build our product. Uh, maybe have a, a crowdfunding campaign to secure the orders and start producing ourselves. Um, and the other option is, um, which is can be done some, simultaneously, to work with bigger companies, license our technology, and then have them build similar products to ours. I guess it all started one time I uh, was in um, like Amsterdam and then uh, someone asked me, where are you from? And having all this background, I, I felt like I really can't say anywhere, you know, that there's nowhere that really matches uh, me. And then um, my girlfriend is from South Korea. We've been together for more than 10 years. And uh, at that moment, I was like, where do I want my kids to grow up? You know, like having this international background. And then I thought to myself, I want to go somewhere that is um, 
built by immigrants. You know, I, I have that feeling in me, the feeling inside of me that I, I want to be part of a immigrant community. Um, some came earlier, some came later. So um, Canada was one of the first options. Um, then I made an Excel sheet of like all the available options for um, um, applying uh, to start a visa. I started contacting each one of them, um, asking questions. Um, to be honest, none of them were really active. And then uh, some of them were downright like rude to us. So, um, and Launch Academy felt so warm and active and they said, please like apply. We have like many cohorts. And then after application, I got like, you know, confirmation that, uh, that you applied for it. So I felt that everything is very active. It, rest of the startup um, programs, I felt more like, oh, it's a dead program. Nothing's going to happen. But um, I really like this about it. And afterwards, after having interviews and everything, I feel like everything just moving fast. Everyone's so friendly. So that was the main reason, I would say. Uh, the first thing really feels like a community. So um, like when I joined the program, it was uh, Jean, Ray, and Sam, and uh, they were so happy about, you know, what they were doing, if they were feeling so fulfilled. And when I saw the team grow and all the other people who were at it, felt like they're enjoying what they're doing. And it didn't seem like, oh, they're doing a service because they're paid for it, like, um, you know, many other companies. So that made me feel very comfortable. I feel like, okay, there is a happy place in Vancouver, a place I'm going to set my life. Uh, I have actually some people that I, I that would care about me if anything happens. So that was the main thing. Um, I would say the, the beginning, in the beginning of the program, they had these uh, sessions like every week to talk about a certain issue. And that also really took the load off, you know, our mind, like talking about, accounting like real estate how to settle up settle down here so all these things um made the whole move much easier um so i really appreciate these two having been to different like cities there's something very unique about vancouver it is a very metropolitan city with many things to do, like many options, like any kind of food that you want. Um, yet it feels a bit like a village, which in my opinion is very good, you know, feels cozy and then you, you don't feel overwhelmed. Like um, like for many other places like Kuala Lumpur, Seoul, Busan, like even Amsterdam, which is actually famous for being very cozy and small. I felt a bit lost, but kind of here you feel like, you know, you get used to the city quite fast. And then location wise, being between uh, US and Canada, everything like all the major West Coast cities are less than three hours away. It's also very strategic for us to, you know, have meetings or um, later on, like build our teams or, around it. So um, even though like, the Scandinavian countries for Netherlands are famous for being flat societies. But like it was very hard for me to get the right connections or just even to have like their attention for a little bit. And in this case, I feel very comfortable in Vancouver when I see like, oh, this company is based in Vancouver. So I can talk with them, you know, in a way. And um, I think that's very unique about it. And that's what you need when you're building a small company growing it because you need to make sometimes connections with bigger companies and then um if you're constantly um like being shut down it's, it's not going to be very helpful but in vancouver i feel like oh these, these people are from vancouver so probably i can make a connection there and i think that's a really good feeling and perhaps a very big asset